Was ab, Wengers? Hello, Wengers! How is everybody doing? How are you doing? Are you doing good? I'm doing good, Matt, because I don't know if you saw, but the greatest television show of all time had another season that came out. Succession? <laughs> yes! Episode one very much was Succession, and we yeah. will be obviously yes. discussing that. No, yeah. bitch, I'm talking about Drive to Motherfucking Survive. Can I just say that, like, it's a, just, it just continues to be a perfect show. Anybody, I wrote this down multiple times in my notes. Yeah. Anybody who hates this show can go <laughs> eat my ass. <laughs> can eat my literal ass. Just doesn't like life. Doesn't like fun. Just hates themselves. Hates the world. Right. Hates everything good. The show is objectively just perfect. It's so fucking good. <laughs> it's, and it's like, here's the thing. Like, when we first watched it, it was like, we were new fans. It was all new. And then there was the vibe of, like, the experienced Formula One fans were like, this show is bullshit. They just make stuff up, and it's, like, not real at all. And it's like, now we've been doing this for a few years. No, this last season sucked, and this was better than the season. The season sucked. <laughs> but guess what? The behind-the-scenes stuff that we saw about the other stuff that was happening around the sport was fascinating. <laughs> yeah. And accurate to what was actually fucking happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The show no, is literally perfect. No, but Brian, sometimes they insert radio. Sometimes they insert commentary that wasn't actually there. Yeah. So the whole thing is invalidated. Yeah, and sometimes they show like an overtake that wasn't even the overtake that they were referring to, or they they they, they, they show a pit stop that wasn't even the right pit stop. So like the whole thing is bullshit. <laughs> You're bullshit. <laughs> if you think go, that, go go do something that's better than that. Yeah, p you, please, please improve please. that. Of Im the thousands of hours of footage that they filmed, why don't you go make an edit that's better and more compelling than the edits that the fucking people at Box to Box no. Films shout. <laughs> Out and Netflix made. Shut the fuck up. No, I don't mean go make a better documentary about Formula One. I'm like, you go contribute something to society <laughs> that's better than this. Yes. Besides just fucking sitting on your asses. Yeah. Just being, oh, well, that's not exactly how it went. This is, <laughs> they're taking some creative licenses. It's a good television show. I wouldn't call it a documentary. It was, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. It's a reality show. I'd call it a reality show. It's not a, 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 an, actual, <laughs> it's an, an actual reflection <laughs> of the sport that I know. And Shut the fuck up. Yeah, dude. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. No, it was, this season was so good. And it, it goes to the, what we've said about Drive to Survive, which is that like the worse the, 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 the worse the, the, worse the Formula One season, the better the Formula, the Drive to Survive season. <laughs> Max who? Max who? <laughs> Max who? But you know what? That's true. Because it's like, listen, Max had the dominant year, but that wasn't like the interesting part of yeah, the, the season. Yeah, the 2021 Drive to Survive was horrible. Yeah, it was trash. <laughs> it was trash. It was trash. Because the on the track stuff was too good. Yeah. But no, the, I mean, there's just, there's so much. There's... But let's, maybe yes. we start with the first season, yeah, the first the, episode. We're going to we're gonna do the first few episodes on this episode. The rest is going to be behind the paywall, bitch. It's going to be on the Patreon. So subscribe, so subscribe now. Subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash trfpod to get the rest of the episodes um, around this beautiful season. And uh, buy tickets to our show if you're oh, in New York. Yeah, don't be crazy. Buy tickets to our literal live program in new york city you're in new york new jersey connecticut anywhere in the any anywhere, the in, the North, area. anywhere in the northeast yeah if you're it. in maine come on <laughs> come down dc come up come to the red flags show at chelsea music hall 7 p.m march 2nd be there or be tickets are in the bio be there or be nick devries links are, okay <laughs> links are in the bio okay so let's get into episode one episode one money talks money talks well, you know, first they start they start out right with just a quick little montage of everybody like living their life. Yeah, it's like off off season. Off what are season. The, what are these guys doing in the off season? And and you know who they started with? Lando. Let's not let's let's not forget who they started with season 1 episode 1. They were like, right. "No, no, no." And I wrote this down. Yeah. I said, "Lando living his tax-free life in Monaco." And then I wrote, "Trying to be cute like Daniel." <laughs> they early early on, they were trying a yes. couple of guys were trying to step into that Danny Rick yeah, voice. Yes, yes, 
I said, uh, opening on Lando, I said, a choice. Do th <laughs> they see the star power of the boy. He's definitely, they're, they're, they're you definitely know, trying you know to fill the problem Ricardo is, though, shoes. You know what Lando's problem is, though? And I know I, I know I go too, I know, I know I go too hard on Lando. Yeah. But we see later, he's just too moody to be Daniel Ricardo. <laughs> he, he can be, he, hey, he's a good replacement for Daniel when the chips are up. Yes. But when they're down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when Daniel, when the chips are down with Daniel, he's so composed right. and professional. Yes, When yes, the chips yes. are down with Lando, he's just a fucking puddle. <laughs> and you don't want to be anywhere near that yeah. guy. He's just like, yeah. mm. He's like, yeah, well, we mm. should be fighting Ferrari. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Daniel's just like, understood. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, Lando's like, I mean, we are, I, we are McLaren, right? I mean, we should be fighting like <laughs> I mean, Ferrari Daniel's like, and Mercedes. When Daniel breaks his hand later, I mean, we're leaking yeah. now, but like, and this is behind the paywall. I mean, you're listening to this, you basically owe us $5. Yes. Um, You know, he's very like, you know, it's not ideal but i'm gonna push through. you know he's right very, right he right, maintains right. he's at the low at his lowest of the low he's pretty fucking yeah level. he keeps like a he has like a millennial delusion <laughs> whereas like lando has like a gen z kind of nihilism at yeah. times <laughs> that's exactly. kind of the that's kind yeah. of the uh that's land that's why lando can't really replace Mm -hmm. Daniel, because he has a full range of emotions. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, they're they're um they're going through the the intro. They're like they're showing what everyone's doing. I wrote down yeah. a couple of things. Yes, yeah. Lance in Canada. Lance in Canada. Looking, so happy to be doing anything other than driving the car. Looking happier than he's ever looked. <laughs> You know, snowboarding in the backwoods, just looking a, a, a million dollar smile. Yeah. I wrote down. Of course, that's how Esteban Ocon jumps into the water. Cause like I don't know a if weird flip. He yeah, oh. just a weird kind of bent flip, you know. <laughs> Not just like diving in, you know, like nice and smooth. Just kind of like, just kind of like a weird front flip. And people are people say you know he's awkward because he's so tall. I'm like he's my height. He's not that tall. He just looks that tall. Chris Paul is his height, right? There are people that right. are his height. Yeah, 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 yeah. That are very graceful. Yes, with their movement for sure, for sure. I, I got to say, though, and this will be we will discuss this later when we get to the Alpine episodes, but Esteban Ocon is looking fucking hot. Someone dude. some I saw this on a TikTok. I'm going to say it. Yeah, I don't know whose account it was. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't come up. He's slowly coming into his Dilf era. <laughs> he looks so good. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what it is. Like he had a nice little tan going on mm -hmm. this season. And he also is like kind of filling out mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit less strong. It's a little bit more like he's, man. He's starting to look more like his dad. Yeah. Who's hot as fuck. And yeah. his mom. Yeah. Who's hot his as His parents who are hot as fuck. <laughs> no, he was like, there was like, like there's a scene of like him on the yacht and they're like talking about like the, the, the thing with Pierre. This will, we will get into this fully behind the paywall. So subscribe to patreon.com slash TRF pod. But, um, <laughs> He was just look. I was like, "Holy, whoa!" Yeah, he's growing into. He's filling out. He's growing into himself. I was feeling. I was feeling. I was feeling a lot of things towards uh, Mr. Esteban Ocon. Um, Pierre in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> what did he said something he, about like? He I'm, said Pierre Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> he's so middle school energy. It's crazy. <laughs> he's so us in middle school. He is truly a grown up middle schooler. <laughs> yeah. He is. It's Arrested Development. He is still a child. He's like 0010, Am I right? He's like yeah. <laughs> Bond, James Bond, <laughs> Bond, Pierre Bond. Yeah, literally, he's truly a puppy dog. <laughs> he's like us in middle school if we were given everything we wanted. Totally, if we were like given a supermodel girlfriend, a bunch of money. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, just Fan, adoring fans, adoring fans. You know, like invited to like cool film festivals. Yeah. You get to like pe like rub elbows, you know, bump elbows with celebrities. Yeah. like the whole thing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, no. I'd be like, yeah, this guy's my enemy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a middle school move. Yeah, I don't like him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave him be lots of opportunities to like me, but he, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pierre said something about like, I'm just gonna be hammered. He's like, it's the off season. Like, I'm gonna be drunk as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> also, a very kind of like young thing yeah. to say to be like excited about like getting drunk. He's 28, by the way. Yeah, it's just like you're, you, the, the years where like that's acceptable are like slowly running out. I remember I got sober at 20, but I remember like I remember I would I lived I still lived in the same house with my friends who were getting wasted all the time. And right, it would just right, right. Be normal to me, just watch wasted people. Yeah. And then I remember it hit like 26 or yeah. 27, and I saw one of my friends just absolutely just falling over drunk, and I went, I just it just hit me. I was like, oh, it's not cute anymore. At a I think it's like past 25 once you once you go you get a couple years after college yes 
And then Pat, once it's over twenty five and you're just falling down drunk, I'm like, this is not. And I it's, and I, even though yeah. I don't drink anymore, I don't judge people that right, drink. Right, right, but right. but then I was like, oh, I'm judging you now. Right. No. I'm judging you now. Seeing like a 30 year old be like drunk to the point of like not being able to take care of themselves is like one of the most unappealing <laughs> things that you can ever see. Yes. It's just so like, it's just dark and bad and gross. Yeah. But anyway, Pierre, <laughs> you know, we didn't see him be drunk on this yeah. thing. Yeah. But, um, you know, he was excited. To, he was trying to drink in the off season. You know, they got this fucking stress. Yeah. But okay. We're seeing little bits and pieces of what they're all doing in the offseason, these fabulous, beautiful lives that these guys live. Verstappen playing Paddle with Lando, Albon, and George. Verstappen saying he hates emails. Yeah, yes. He was like, if, 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 I, get, if, I, if get, I get an email between December and uh, in December or January, I get so mad. <laughs> <laughs> mood? Mood much? Then I wrote, seeing Gunther in what is now the rest of his life, <laughs> saying how the offseason is boring, and he's like fishing. Yeah, fishing. Sad as fuck. Mm -hmm. Zach... Zach Brown playing golf. I gotta, I, I gotta ask you, how's the swing? Um, he's got like a classic older guy with a bit of a gut swing, which means that there's like power, but it's like it, it just he doesn't have the flexibility. He yeah, it's just like you don't necessarily have like the perfect mobility to like slot in, so you gotta kind of like whip it. But you can, I mean, you can still fucking crack the ball like that. Does John Daly not have that mobility? John Daly. How does he slot in if he's got John a Daly? Gut? Has this like crazy? I mean, he does like the super over backswing. Yeah. He has like a bunch of like amazing spinal flexion, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mike Isretel, but um, <laughs> um, yo, know, John Daly, like ha he doesn't have like a classic, you know, Roy McElroy like beautiful swing. He's got like I an see. ugly swing, but he hits the ball a mile. Actually, it's, what's actually interesting is in the in the opening scene where. I think it's in the opening scene, if not the or the McLaren episode. It's like Lando is in the cart with Zach, and they're playing with like these two other guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zach is in the wrong fairway, <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it's like the holes, like the holes are next to each oh, other. And sometimes if you missed. if you hook it left, yeah, you, you can, can you, you can still be like in another. You're just in the other holes fairway because you just like bombed it, but you bombed it the wrong direction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like in the in the shot that they have of them playing golf, it's because <laughs> Zach Brown hit it into the wrong fairway, <laughs> and I'm like, damn. Um, yeah, but let's no but zach gave them the perfect edit because he goes yeah i okay. love the off season i don't have to see any dickheads right and then it just cuts to antibes is that antibes france what's it called uh-huh wait that's where the stroll thing was happening oh sure 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 it's sure. just antibes france yeah. yes and then and then it's yeah it's the this was so amazing this stroll party this aston martin stroll party and of course i had subtitle i had like you know the closed captions on. I could yeah. read everything, and they're right. like, "He's gonna, he's coming, he's coming." Stro Stroll, he's, he's almost here. Yeah, he's almost Miss, yes, Mister Mister Stroll will arrive in ten. Yeah, Mister Stroll will be here in t minus ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's all the, like the underlings like yelling at each other about yeah. like things not being yes, right. Yes, yes. There's yes. like the you know there's like the uh, of the in the hierarchy. There's like you know the people like setting up the thing, then their boss, then their boss, then their boss. Everyone's stressed as fuck. Yes. Because Daddy, Daddy Strout, Daddy <laughs> Strout, <laughs> Daddy Stroll is coming to town. Yes, and and as you see, Dominic Colley, who who's the head of F one, you see Wolf show up, but yep. they're not as important. That's right. Do they have their wristbands? We're not sure. Can they be let in? We're not sure. Yeah, make sure everyone make sure that everyone has their wristbands. But Mister Stroll does not need a wristband. Mr. Stroll does not need a wristband. If we had to title this episode, Mr. it would be Mr. Mr. Stroll, Stroll does, does not, not need, need a wristband. wristband. <laughs> I mean, it's just, this is what's so amazing about All this the world. models and the cars mm -hmm. and the green lights. Yep. I mean, this looked like an eyes wide shut Illuminati ass. Like, what? who do I have to fuck to get to <laughs> this party? Yeah, Jenny wrote, this is a John Wick event. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a John Wick. It's straight out of Succession. Yeah. I mean, you watch Succession, you're like, do these people fucking exist? And yeah. it's like, yes, they do. Yeah. They are in the Formula One, you know, ecosystem. Yes. That's where they live. Um, 
But um, she also wrote, "Okay, Lance in a double-breasted navy blazer hits different." <laughs> <laughs> Lance, I wasn't looking at his outfit. I was looking. I was like, "He looks fucking miserable." Miserable. <laughs> this whole thing's going on, and Lance Stroll looks like he would rather be anywhere, anywhere else. else. More like, specifically, the slopes. snowboarding. <laughs> the slopes. Then at this absolutely sexy fucking event yes yeah was, he, he also like he arrives on the boat like standing on the back of the boat like you know when 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 lawrence arrives it's just it's so fucking epic yeah and then and then you see um he's stroking michael douglas's hair yes i love that <laughs> i love crazy. that i wrote stroking michael douglas's hair pussy eater in chief <laughs> <laughs> that's right um dude who gets throat cancer from doing from from doing the work yeah only Michael Douglas, dude. Yeah, do, getting it, getting it for a worthy cause. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yeah. So I mean, it's just epic party. The celebrities are there. It's so fucking. And I, I, get, I just gotta say, like, this is what hooked us about this world. Yeah, it's just like this is so fucking fascinating. Yeah, they make all other sports look broke as shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just so. It just hits so different. Yeah, because they get they all the people in it got wealthy doing other shit. This is mm -hmm. just right. the side project. Right. It's not even the most lucrative thing. You know what I didn't know? Yeah. Is that he just straight up owns he's the CEO of Aston Martin. Mm -hmm. Like the car brand. Yes. Not just not just the racing label. Yes. Yeah. Not just like how Total Wolf like run like right. owns thirty percent own Mercedes, Mercedes Benz, Benz the car company. Yes, yes. He yes. owns Acid Martin the car company. Yeah. The guy whose father was in the Schmata business. Yes, yes. Is now yeah fucking like owns Aston Martin yeah straight up. It's yeah crazy, crazy how rich he is. Yeah. He's so rich. <laughs> it's crazy. My God. Yeah. Guys, I mean, this is all coming out out of order, but we're about to fucking meet his son-in-law. Yes, like, we are. We are interviewing his son-in-law like, later today. Yeah, yeah. This, the episode will be coming out in in later in um in March. <laughs> yeah. But um, fucking yeah. a, dude. I mean, it's uh, it's wild. We're gonna be asking him a bunch of questions about like what it is like to be Lawrence Stroll's son-in-law. What is that experience like? Because I am, I am definitely fucking curious. Yeah, yeah. So they're at this party. Alonso's there, looking fucking sexy as hell. Yeah, Lance is the Lance is there, looking like he doesn't want to be there. Yeah. Um, you know, Lawrence is like, I'm going to create. I I'm going to create one of the best Formula One teams in the world. You know. Just Dr. Evil vibes, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> um, 100%. Um, and, and then... You know, you see Lance, who's like, like the that picture of young Lance, he's like, it's crazy, you know. You know, I looked up to Alonzo, and now I'm driving with him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. I think what's crazy is that the car launch, what I noticed was that, like, the intensity in which Alonzo was staring at that car. Mm. Was like, are you wasting my fucking time? Right. Like, am I pissing another year? Right. The way he was fucking just laser locked. Yeah. So I couldn't get over. I was like, he is not broke. He has not blinked once mm -hmm. while looking at that fucking car. Mm -hmm. He's examining every curve, yeah. every little gully and nook and cranny of that fucking car. Right. It was very interesting. That they picked that up. Well, it was a risk. I mean, when he went there, it was like, what is this about to be? It wasn't. I mean, now Everywhere he looks like was, a genius. I mean, he was what? He, he was at Alpine. He was at Alpine, and they only offered him like a one and one. Right. So, and 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 Lawrence was like, come three years? How yeah, many years yeah, you yeah. want? And he was, so was <laughs> yeah. it? Was it as, but it was a risk in terms of like an unknown. Yes. It was yeah. a risk. In, I mean, in terms of a contract, but in terms of security, for sure. But like. Oh, it's a brilliant move. Brilliant. Alpine is. So, I mean, we'll get into Alpine yes. later. They literally no, did two episodes on what a shit show yes. Alpine was. And also, it's looking like this year they're going to be, to be horrible. horrible. Yes. Yeah. Um, that big ass front nose. Um, and then and then just this is my first moment yes. of like anybody who talks shit about this show yeah. can go fucking, <laughs> yeah. you know, jump in the LA River, which has no water in it most of the time. <laughs> Lance was like, yeah, I'm going to go biking. It's yes. going to be fun. Yeah, I'm not going to mountain bike. I'm just going to do the road. And I'm like, holy shit like they got him pre-injury yeah. just being like yeah you know i was gonna go biking with some friends i'm yeah. like this is this is they got it <laughs> yes. they got it in the can yes <laughs> it's like it's like 
it's like getting footage of Kennedy being like, yeah, I'm just going to go pop down to Dallas yeah. real quick. <laughs> just give yeah, a few a speeches. Parade, you know, know, just, it'll be fine. Yeah, the motorcade, you know. Pump some hands, kiss some babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go convertible. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go convertible with it. I know, they're saying that maybe I should just be in the car and roll down the windows. Yeah. No, I think I'm going convertible. Uh, yeah. I want to be among the people. Yeah, exactly. Um, Dallas, my yeah. people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's literally what it is. Yeah. They got so true. They got they got it. They they got it. You know that the producers were like, yes. <laughs> when he broke his hand when later. They, well, they, they, they broke his wrist. <laughs> yeah, it's like they broke it. They're like, do we have him? Holy, hold, hold on. Do we have him saying fuck? No, they probably we they probably it. didn't even think about including that before. Of course. Yeah, and then they no, were that like, would have that was just extra footage. Yeah. That was just would have lived on the cutting room floor. Yeah. We're like, oh, wh who cares? Yeah. We have him on mic saying he's going to go biking. Who cares? Yeah. And then he breaks his fucking wrist. The, and they're like, these bike, these fucking drivers with their bikes. Well, the drivers and their bikes are, is crazy. Yes. With their yes. biking hobbies. I mean, Alonso, Toto, Stroll. That would be like me as a podcaster just being like, I like to do primal screams yeah. every couple of days and yeah. just shooting my voice, maybe risking my voice. Right, yeah. It's like, isn't like... I like that to do sword swallowing on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting into sword swallowing. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. It's crazy. It's like, you know, it's like, well, I can stay in shape. And I'm like, there are, there are also Pelotons. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so... Yeah, we, we know what happens. Like Stimulus to fatigue ratio, <laughs> as Dr. Mike Israel would say. It's just, how about injury risk, too, right. you know? Yeah, Stimulus so... to fatigue ratio. How about incline treadmill? Stimulus have... to fatigue ratio. Mm. Think about it. And then Lance hurts himself, and then Lawrence, I got to ask, as an acting yes. person, yes. it looked like he got vulnerable. He's yes. like, I got to remember first that I'm, I'm dead. Yes. I'm dead. And then he got and then he like lowered his chin and got all like like I, I'm I'm human. Yes. There's a there's a little rubbery soul in here. Uh-huh. I'm like, was he really sad there or was he trying to like <laughs> what, what was going on there? I don't I, know. I, I didn't I don't know. I mean it's just it's, <laughs> He's so he's citizen Kane. He's so hard to know. Well it's it's there's gonna you're gonna have to do a lot of work. Because everything we've seen before that is like I am uh, I am mogul I am business right because he maybe was like I need to maybe walk this back because he's <laughs> like I will I will stop at nothing to yeah. push this thing and then now his son's hurt and he goes but I'm also a dad I have to remember I'm dad <laughs> <laughs> I said I said I wrote Lawrence I'm dad go off King yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I... I, here's I think the sentiment is real. Yes, of but course. But to just deliver it on camera, like to, to, you know, get the makeup, you yeah. know, drive to the place. I, I'm just saying in that moment, was that real? I don't doubt that he loves his son yeah, more course. than anything in the world. Of course. Yeah. I don't doubt that. Yeah. I'm just saying that that's really hard to just conjure up. Right, right, right. You know, on the day. Right, right, right. right I'm right. sure when he got the call, he was worried. Yeah, of course, of course. But to recreate it in, you think that, part, court, you think in a, that environment, yeah. in that Netflix environment to recreate it. Do you think a part of him when he got the call was like, fucking biking, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> you with your biking. <laughs> Fucking the biking. <laughs> I remember, dude. I remember yeah. the. I remember this so clearly. Mm -hmm. I got shit face drunk. Yeah. When I tore my knee up jumping over the Central Park. Yes. I was with you. Yes, you were. I was with you. Yes. I tore my knee up. Yeah. And I was going to go on a trip with my parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I can't tell them. Right. How you hurt how I knee. how I hurt my knee leaping yeah. over the Central Park wall. Right. Yes. So I told them I heard it playing basketball with yep. my friends. Yeah, I'm sure. And they got so mad at me <laughs> for playing pickup with my friends. They're like, we're going on a trip in a week. Yeah. And you're playing pickup yeah. with your friends. <laughs> yeah. I, like, went, I went, whoa. <laughs> I was like, I I can't even imagine if I told you the truth. Yeah, yeah, that I was in a blackout. I was in a blackout and I leapt over the Central Park wall. And then landed, landed in, in human feces, maybe <laughs> dog, hope, large dog, small human feces. Three Doberman pinchers <laughs> kind of all came together and, and landed in a nice little pile that Matt landed. But yeah, in. my parents were just so mad at me. He was like, what were you doing playing pickup 
basketball four days before a trip yeah. to the Caribbean. Right. You've ruined our trip. <laughs> uh, like, where you're going to be sitting around most of the time. Right, right, right. You, know like, I mean? you have to be like. It's like he did the equivalent, but right. like with the Formula One team. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. My parents would be terrible at running a Formula One team. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that goes without saying. He, I, I, was, I didn't know that he hurt, fucked up his toe. Yeah, they, they left that out. Yeah. Which it seems like actually arguably harder. Yes. It was interesting because Danica Patrick, we'll get to her in a second, but Danica Patrick was talking about all the G's that the that mm-hmm. the steering wheel pulls. I know she comes from IndyCar where you actually, it's not power steering. So that's her experience. Right. Yeah, and yeah, I know yeah, that yeah. these have power steering, but it seems like that that wheel will come back. Yeah, there's still a, there's still you still a have tension. to fight the wheel. You still yeah. have to fight the wheel. No, which it's is, fucking intense. Yes. It's fucking intense. And so uh, then. And then she was talking about, and this is something we learned from uh, Bradley Skeens, is like how hard you have to fucking slam yeah. your foot on that. Right. On the, on on the, the brake. brake. Yeah. I'm wondering if it was his left toe or his right toe, because yeah. that would make a difference. I mean, right? I think both, I think probably both, it's still like. You're more probably more gentle on the throttle than right, you're on the right, brake, right, right, but right. that would make a difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. Oh, good. You know, and then it cuts to Christian buying a horse on his phone. He's yeah. like, he's <laughs> sorry. Just like, sorry, don't talk to me. Sorry, I, I'm I'm buying a I'm buying a horse right now. <laughs> this, I mean, it's just like that's the world of this. Yeah. Just like, you know. If you did this show about you do they've done the shows with the other sport it just doesn't hit the same when like someone's like distracted from work because they're putting in a bid on a horse. <laughs> you know, it's just it doesn't quite hit the same. Um you got Albon, he's like first to the shot, last on the track and they're like okay, they're they're like I need a hero. <laughs> like uh-huh. now that Danny Rick is gone, right. like somebody and I think it's actually Albon. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. It wasn't Lando that came. Th- yes. Uh, and then I wrote this later. Yeah. We're giving a game away, but I was like, is Almon actually our dream guest? Mm. He might be the guy. He's a, yeah. He's, he's a, the guy. He's the best guy to have on a podcast. Yeah. He's honestly. a good interview. He's a good interview and he can riff. Yeah. We're going to get to his riff later. Like yes. the guy can just fucking riff. Totally. Um, Botas, like talking about his mullet. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're meeting, and, you're, you're, you know, you're meeting the crew. Danica Patrick. First I went, oh no. Uh-huh. And then I went. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. gotta say she killed it in this in this season. She wasn't bad. I thought that she was great. I thought the insight was like I thought that the insight was just like it 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 hit the emotional stakes of like what was going on. Yes. she knew how to like frame the stuff. She knew how to like it was a bit Buxtony. It was a bit Buxtony, like a little bit hyped up, but like I'd rather that. I mean, Buxton was just oh yeah, he was looking extra tan this season. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Lando saying I think Yuki got smaller. I gotta say, every, there was well, so much. L- there was L- so much Yuki disrespect <laughs> in this fucking season, the whole season. But we will get to that. I mean, anyway. Lando's like all about Lando's talking about how small Yuki is, how big Oscar is. The right, fact, dude. Just yeah. maybe you got some issues about your own yeah. fucking heights. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. But then I will, Lando crushed with this asking Lance if he can wank yet. <laughs> I mean that was. Killer. I mean that's a Danny Rick. It's a Danny. That's a Danny Rick question. Yeah, here, Someone's got to ask. Can you jerk off? That's well, an obvious eighth grade question. Yes. <laughs> that's the first thing you ask your friend when he hurts his hand. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, can you jack off? That's yeah. the most important question. <laughs> These are all eighth grade insights. Yeah. Yeah. It was perfect. And, and then Lance, he was like, you know, I'm saving all my energy for the race. Right, they were riffing about it. They were riffing. And then Carlos was like, if he's driving Formula One, he can definitely win. <laughs> 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 They're so good. They're I mean, that so was clever. such a fucking yeah. amazing yes. interaction that yeah. we get to witness because the show's perfect. Yeah. Anyway, and it was like, they they, they didn't even realize it was, ha- like, it happened so fast, they didn't yeah. really have the cameras on yeah. them. That's how, like, good yeah. the, the, that fucking little bit of dialogue was. Yeah, and then the, with Fred and Toto, and then Toto's like, you've lost weight, and he goes, no, maybe it's the red. He goes, yeah. no, 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 I see. You've lost weight. I mean, yeah. there's all these amazing... <laughs> Lewis, Lewis, then it cuts to Lewis. Last year was shocking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even Sh- remember what it's like to win anymore, honestly. <laughs> I'm like, babe. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what my parents look like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> babe, <laughs> you've on. won 103 fucking Formula One races. You don't remember what and it's then he like says, to I'm win. Here, and he goes, I'm here to reclaim my eighth. And then he serves. Yes. And then he just like looks at the camera and is like, yeah, I said reclaim. Yes, he Because did. it was taken from me. Yeah. But ultimately, this episode was about the Aston resurgence. It was about Lance coming back from injury, 
Aston, and and it's like it was great. The beginning of the that first race was fucking incredible. Oh yeah, we're, we're we've been half an hour and we're like three minutes. Into yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, but we all know what happened. But I think it is like you know to to be able to see behind the scenes of that thing that like it was. Like the beginning of the season rocked. Yeah. And that's what this show can like remind you of. Like these moments of a season that you think back on. You're like, this was boring. Red Bull won basically every race. It was kind of a fucking like snoozer. No, like there were wildly exciting moments. And that first race was one of them because yeah, of Alonso. And, that amazing, and then and then what people forget is that in that amazing race where they had an amazing result, Lance hit Alonso. I totally forgot. Fully ran that into that the was back. A, that, that, that hero drive from Lance was almost a disaster. Yes. That was almost the Alpine situation. Yes, and and it's so, like by a by a fucking pair was <laughs> a disaster. Um, yes, and yes. Um, you know Lance just being like, I'm fucking fighting, man. I'm fighting, and then I loved Otmar in that moment with uh -huh. like with that Cockney guy who was like, How the fuck Aston done what they done? Yeah. He's like, They've hired a bunch of aerodynamicists from Red Bull. <laughs> and the Cockney guy was like. We need to fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> we should, we should, why don't we do that? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that was that was glorious. Lawrence, you know, being in the throes of happiness that like his yeah. his project was a success. His number one boy. His number one boy, <laughs> Fernando Alonso, was a success. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was this episode. Fucking amazing start. And then we go episode two. Whenever someone says, I, I wrote this out. Mm-hmm. Someone saying Fernando is now behind is now is like the most terrifying thing you can hear. Yeah. <laughs> like sure. anyone says Fernando is now behind or like Lewis is uh -huh, now behind, uh -huh. you're like, oh fuck. Right, right. And then when Alonzo fought signs, he went, Yes. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, epic. So fucking good. Um Okay, episode two. Titled Fall from Grace. Now we knew the DeVries. We were like, DeVries is going to be... This was like another fascinating part of the season. I mean, this season did have, as, as boring as the, the, the majority of it was, Nick DeVries getting in there and fucking shitting the bed and Danny Rick coming in as the fucking shark looming. Danny Rick's <laughs> behind. It's, you know, I mean, yeah. it, it was amazing. Oh, Vankas, you know that this episode is brought to you by BetMGM. Now, here's the thing, Vankas. We've talked to BetMGM ourselves directly, and we've asked them to put a few bets on the table Bespoke this year. Bespoke style. Bespoke style, and they're season-long bets, so you got to do it this week. you got to do it today. You can bet on Yuki Tsunoda getting a podium in 2024. You can bet on Daniel Ricciardo getting a podium in 2024. The V-carb? Do you believe? Or Here's the thing. We all know the season is going to be boring. This is a way to make it fucking interesting. This is people. a way to make it fucking interesting. You can vote on Lando Norris getting his first victory of all. Of, or uh, not. Or you can bet on Which him. Which I will be pounding. <laughs> you can be hammering Lando Norris not getting a victory in his, for his first victory in 2024. I can fade that shit. <laughs> you can bet on Mercedes getting a victory in 2024. Lewis getting a victory in 2024. George Russell getting a victory in 2024. All the top drivers. You can bet. Bet on them winning a race in 2024. You can also bet on if Max Verstappen's going to win every single race in 2024. I might be hammering that bet. Because, honestly. listen, we've... Yeah, the board this season is probably going to be a fucking snoozer. Yeah. And, you know, we got to keep our, our love for the sport involved, and that's how we're going to make it interesting this year. By at, We've asked BetMGM to put these bets in to make it interesting Dana, for don't us. Don't make us look like idiots. Sign up. <laughs> yeah, sign using up. Red 150, code Red 150. That's right. <laughs> Otherwise, we're um, going to look like real morons. Yeah, well, you use the code Red 150, you deposit $5 and place your first wager on any game or race, you will receive $150 in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. Just make sure you use the bonus code. Red 150! When you sign up. So you have $150 of, of not your money. To wager. To, to wager on, on, Yuki, on Yuki Sonoda. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369 for New York. Call 1-800-327-5050 for Massachusetts. 21 over. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP for Arizona. 1-800-BETS. Off for Iowa. 1-800-981-0023 for Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms and use promotional offers not available in D.C., Mississippi, New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Don't forget, if you haven't signed up for BetMGM, use the bonus code RED150 and get $150 in bonus bets when placing a $5 wager today on Yuki Sonoda getting a podium and Leonard Norris getting his first win in 2024. Yes, um, fall from grace. Fall from grace. 
I mean, it does. It, the episode does start with Christian Horner. With Christian Horner. With Sansa. With hiring the most We're, British. Sh- British Santa sucks. <laughs> He's supposed to be jolly old St. Nick. And he's like, hello, kids. He's like, hello, want a cup of tea? Yeah. Can I get a cup of tea? The most rizzless Santa. Yeah. Is this how you guys... This is why you guys hate Formula One now, now that it's fucking lit. (laughs) Because your Santas are fucking just popped a fucking Ambien before before you guys sit on his lap. He's fucking all got nine barbiturates in his fucking system. Yeah. You guys... You guys got no energy. Santa's complaining about the class system. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Yeah. Um, no, but he he's hired this Santa to, like, you know, talk to his kids. The worst um, Santa to ever live. The worst Santa to ever live. It, it it does need to be probably noted that then in, in the episode, Santa does ask the kids if Christian's been it, good this year, yeah. which is just... Given everything that's happening, that that is, like, on film was it, insane. 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 Yeah, and another reason why Drive to Survive is amazing. It's perfect, and that they and that, and that they kept it in. <laughs> well, I think the, the, the train had already left the station yeah, probably at that point. For sure. Um, yeah, they have this little banter about like I think Max Verstappen is faster than you, Father Christmas. <laughs> and then he goes, I, I, and then and then Santa gets like annoyed. He's like, Why well, go, go three times the speed of light? And, and then Max is like, like, Well, he Max goes, goes four. Max goes four. <laughs> Crazy. Um, you see him with the horses. Max would be like, fucking Rudolph fucking <laughs> sucks. <Yeah. laughs> shocking. Rudolph is shocking. Shock, a shocking result. <laughs> From Rudolph. Yeah. I mean, there's, so, you know, and then it, you're, the episode, you're framing. It's like, right? It's Danny Rick. Well, they had that brilliant, like, let's talk about the horses in your stable. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. And right. then, it, like, that was a great metaphor yes. for all his drivers and his, he's got so many right thoroughbreds right in the stable and then uh and then it goes to daniel and it's and he i think he wanted daniel from the beginning because he because yes. we know yes because helmet told us he was like he was like helmet and threw his hands up he's yep. like yeah christian did not want nick DeVries on the team no christian wanted him and helmet didn't espn red bull boss admits horner right to doubt DeVries. Wow. Oh, so that oh, was a thing they disagreed on. Interesting. So Marco wanted him. Marco, no, after Monza, Marco was like, let's get him. Let's get yeah. him. And Christian was like, what? I don't know. Is what? That, are we just going to invalidate like the fact that he's 98 years old? And the guy who's been sitting on Toto's lap and Toto doesn't want to do anything. Yeah. With him. We're going to yeah. like, we're, what? We, we so want like that an guy? impulse buy. We're yeah. buying a USA Today based right. on some tawdry headline. Right, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. It was an impulse buy. I see. Yeah, so yeah. And the helmet admitted that. Helmet was like, that was all yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christian wanted Danny. That's pretty clear. Danny, the, you're, you're, they do showcase a lot of like Danny in his in his role as really just like a marketing arm of yeah. Red Bull. Um, Dancing monkey. Yeah. And, and you know, Danny was like, how old are you, Perez? Like, how much more fuel you left yeah, you got in the tank? Yeah. We're like, ah, shit, we're the same age. <laughs> gotcha. And then um, we first meet Nick DeVries. Yes. Ugh. I mean, we, I mean, I watched this guy in the Formula 2 Chasing the Dream, and I was like, I think this guy kind of sucks. Yes. And then, I mean, my feelings about him deepened because it's just so, such a sad story. Mm-hmm. But, like, they, it was a tough hang. He's a brutal hang. I mean, nightmare blunt rotation. Him, James, James Bowles, Bowles. <laughs> and Bruno Famine. Yes. Are just the, the nightmare... <laughs> The nightmare of all nightmare from blunt rotations. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, no. We, well, we meet him. He gets into the back seat, and he's, he's like, getting to the back seat. He's late to. They're shooting skeet. Another on, succession move on Christian's estate. Yes, he's late. He gets into the car, and he's like, "Let's get a move on." I'm like a bit late, and he's in the car watching YouTube tutorials. I love that about how to shoot. That skeet. I liked. I didn't like that. Oh, really? Cause bro, that's, just so, that's such a you you thing, Brian. I'm gonna show up and just start <laughs> popping off rounds. Here's the thing, I just I'm like, don't be on camera doing that. <laughs> don't show. That's that's for you to do. But yeah, you couldn't have done that the night before. R- right, you're gonna be on camera. You're gonna be in the car, like being like, fuck. Okay, how do I? Can I? Okay, pull it. Okay, aim it on your shoulder. Like it was just. I don't know. I didn't like it. Okay. I felt I felt for a guy who's like Mr. Prepared, Mr. Whatever. The fact that he was like late and then like playing catch up in the car. I was like, are you like in line with yourself, my, right, my king? Right. There's some dissonance there. Yeah. How are you? How are you late to the big? I to mean, the, you're slow. 
Your whole thing is that you're on time. Right. And that you're Mr. Prepared. Right. And Mr. Experienced. He's like, like Mr. Like Military. Like if you Dot your eyes, cross your T's. Yes. And if Yuki's the like kind of rogue, like I don't like, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. You're yeah. Mr. Like, I ch yeah, I do. And I then he's putting it on the driver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, you're fucking late, yeah. dude. This is not the <laughs> Yeah. And then he's asking the driver how much time to the destination. He was like, right. So how much how much time till we're yeah, there? Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. You were late. Right. So he he gets there. I, I, I did want to note that like they're they're there, they're all shooting skeet. I um, wrote I wrote I was like I wrote, who do I have to fuck to get to this charity shoot where they probably hunt real human beings? Uh, look, <laughs> look like one of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it looked like the purge a bit, but um, no. no Dan but Danny's just chilling. No, I love that was the perfect. Thing. He's like, <laughs> he's not touching a gun. He goes, I taught them all that they knew, or no, which one is it? And then Nick is, he's doing the perfect small talk, and Nick is like. You know, I'm more of a man of peace. Yeah. Like, I'm just, he's like, trust, trust. <laughs> Danny's just chilling, like, making effortless small talk. Also, like, but, but when they're shooting, Danny's like, <laughs> like, he's like, he's so, like, jumpy. He's like, oh, this is scary to me. <laughs> you know, he's unafraid to be, like, you know, that way. Whereas Nick is like, no, like, I'm, let me, oh, no, I, I suck at this. Just kidding. Um, then, yeah. And then it's but just. Then, so then it cuts to, to DeVries is like, you know, he's on camera. I'm Nick DeVries. I am, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm, here I am. More complete and experienced and mature. And I was like, how dare you talk about Japanese baby Jesus this way? <laughs> yeah, saying that he's more complete than Yuki, I just wrote, fuck off. <laughs> Fuck well, off. Well, dude. you're less complete in the sense that you haven't been in Formula One yet. Right. He's younger than you and been in Formula One for three well, three years at this point. So what are we really talking about here? He also says, like, he says it to the camera. He goes, I believe I'll reach the pinnacle of our sport. And the way he said it was just like, he didn't, he just like, even when he said it, he didn't believe it. You think he felt like an imposter? I think that there is like a disconnect between like how he thinks he should be. Like, this is how professionals act. This is what professionals say. And then like what he really like with his chest believes. Because it was one it's, of these, he yeah, was like. I, there's frauds out there. It's like, you know, you wear the suit, you mm -hmm. wear the tie. It's like, but is that even what you are right. or how you feel that you are? It's yes. like you're projecting a thing instead of just being the thing. No, the reality is he lives in like a shitty one bedroom in Monaco. That he cleans like fucking Howard Hughes. <laughs> Show me the blueprints. Show me the blueprints. Show but me the blueprints. The, the scene of him cleaning the apartment was disturbing. <laughs> His tiny ass. Like His my my apartment in Brooklyn. Literally. Like with, with my first girlfriend out of college. But in Where Monica. I could reach from my bedroom, like yes. I could reach from my bed and open the fridge <laughs> and grab a drink. Yes, that is the vibe of Nick DeVries' Monaco apartment. <laughs> because it's like It's like then don't live in Monaco, my dude. It's like here's the thing. There are certain, it's like, sometimes you, you gotta check some boxes before you live in Monaco. Right. And then he's passing, he's like, y the Lambo's not my style. Yeah, well, you can't, I, I, you can't afford it, my yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't have you. It's not my style. But as opposed to just being like straight up, yeah, like I live in this like kind of, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm not where I want to be yet. But it's yeah. like, but he has this kind of vibe of like, no, like I'm a kill, like I'm a killer. I'm yeah. like, let me watch, watch me say the things you're supposed to say. And he's driving this weird car that's stupid. Mm -hmm. You know that car? That's a fifty thousand. I looked that car up that he was driving. That's a yeah. fifty thousand dollar electric car. It's like the car equivalent of a beach cruiser, uh -huh. and it doesn't go over like 25 miles an hour. It's just like a waste of money. Interesting. He might have a sponsorship. Right, 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 right. In which case, that is sick. Right, sure, But, but sure. I was just like, it's like Lambo, not my style. Yeah, I, I gotta give- He's playing bocce or whatever the fuck he's playing. Right, yeah, he's playing with his friend. Yeah, And they're just playing. like, blop. And he's and he honestly is sucking at it. <laughs> so he's playing, uh, you know, I, we're, we're, we're piling on on Nick DeVries here, but like, when you come in so hot and like, I'm more complete than Yuki, I do gotta give Yuki some credit. Yuki was just like, I'll beat him. Nobody was nice about him. He's yeah. like, he's got a very good resume, blah, 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 but yeah, I'll, I'll beat I'll him. I'll beat him. Yeah, and he did. And beat yeah. him, he did. Um... Yeah, it's and things are not going well for DeVries. He's not driving the car well. It's not. It's not. It's not really happening. And all the exes weigh in Albon, Gasly. <laughs> yes. And like, yeah, it's tough out there. You yes. Know? All the exes coming out of the woodworks, yeah. being like, yeah, you know, it, it's going to be tough for Nick. My favorite part of the whole episode is when, literally, it, it was DeVries and Checo talking, and Adrian knew he was just sitting on the boat. Oh. 
complete main character the main character is just sitting there not talking just like not wanting to be anywhere near these two albatrosses <laughs> <laughs> and, and but, Nick DeVries is trying to be like right right and he's like uh-huh mm-hmm, and it, but mm-hmm. I gotta say at this time Checo was like dude it, it wasn't going that bad for Checo oh, at really? this point it, it went bad for Checo like Monica was like kind of the start the, of it yeah. going down yeah 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 but, but DeVries kind of being like nobody kind of wanted to touch him appealing to like like Nui being like yeah I just gotta focus you know like right you know Nui it's the meme of like the guy talking to the girl like yeah. shouting in her ear yeah. at, at the <laughs> rave like I'm actually like I, I started a crypto company blah, blah, blah. the girl's just like will you please shut the fuck up <laughs> that was that was the breeze like talking about his strategy about like how what it takes to be like a competitor to adrian newey on the yacht yeah going to the fucking monaco and the track. thing is, is is like now i'm wondering if 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 box if um drive to survive has reached their saturation point like how many new fans are they it's like when are we gonna get him right when are we gonna just follow him around Please for a day. let that be because the like, next season. Because you know the the Max thing, they didn't. They don't. They, they got to be careful around Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like follow the him the fuck around. I want to see him with his fucking notebook. That's what the season episode. did so well was that it's like you know what makes this world fascinating is the stuff that's going on behind the yeah. scenes. And it, uh, uh, it obviously when there's things that are happening on track that are great, it's that makes it that much better. But like it's the whole world of the thing. So yeah, go into the different nooks and crannies of yeah. this world and Adrian Newey is something they gotta follow if if, if he'll have them. But and then he, yeah, so DeVries the reason the montage shit, of him just sucking. Just sucking and then it's like <laughs> can't figure out the tire switch and they're like, don't worry about the tire switch, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You got so just drive yeah, the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which tires are these? Just shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Um, and then it's Danny Rick. Let's and the bring, test. They were there for the test. They were there for the test. What more do you guys want? Yeah, I'm sorry. What like, more do you guys? Are you not entertained? They were there for the tire test. You saw Danny like getting ready to fuck at Silverstone to get his job back. Is yeah. that not enough for you? Yeah. Oh my God! And Danny's got. And the- they were there for. I mean, I'm I'm leaking here. I mean, this is behind the behind the paywall, but the the carding between Esteban and Gasly. Are you not fucking entertained? That was. Are the, you not are you entertained? That was some of the greatest things that's ever been. <laughs> I mean, this is the best show of all time. It's so good. We didn't even know that that happened. No. And they, nobody talked no about that, 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 that happened. happened. No one knew that that happened, and then we get to see yeah. it on fucking TV. I'm later. like, holy shit! They're. Anyway, behind the paywall, you owe us five dollars if you even want to hear us way. really get into that. Yeah, you I, fucking scumbags. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Freeloading no, Dan- <laughs> Danny's because uh, and Danny, it's interesting to hear him say like because there's a there's a clip or a sound at least a sound bite of of uh, someone I think maybe Christian or someone saying to Danny like you know NASCAR is like dying to have you yeah and that like these other these other racing series are dying to have Danny and he's just like yeah but I just it's like I, I do I do features I don't do TV. <laughs> That was yeah, that is I'm the a vibe. Movie star. I don't and go he, into television. Exactly. And he's like, he's like, I'll do a limited series for HBO, maybe. <laughs> but he's like, no, I'm not done yet. Yeah. And at the time, there is a vibe like him keep staying that. It's just like, hey, like, are you like, why? What are you holding on to, buddy? But now look at him, looking like a genius. I mean, he might get a podium this year. We'll see. Yeah, um, even if he doesn't get called up. Totally. Um, yeah. So and Danny, and then they 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 look at it and they're like, so. He would have been right next to Max if he had done this time last week. Christian loves Dan. Yeah, we're he does. Um, but then they have that that meeting with um, Peter Bayer, right? Uh, his Blake. Blake. And is that Nick? Was that Nick? Maybe. <laughs> was that Nick? I couldn't see. Couldn't I couldn't. Really I couldn't him. tell. But it was like, kind of like Danny's team or yeah. whatever. And they like and they they go around. They're just like, so are we doing this. And it was like you get to see them, and, and now here's the thing: maybe they have the conversation. This maybe this was a rehash of a conversation, yeah. right? For the cameras, whatever. But the fact that like you see them being like, so yeah, we're doing this, right? Yeah. Well, so ev- everyone, we're agreed. Yeah, everyone, we're doing I love it. And like, like Peter, and then I love when Christian goes. So Peter, what do you think about this? <laughs> Peter's like. Yeah. Peter, what do you think about this? I think it's great. I yeah. think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, you little puppet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree, Christian. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, I think having Daniel Ricardo on our junior team would be a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I think that that could. I think that I that, think that, that could, could help with the marketing aspect of uh, this junior team. Yeah, and then yeah, the, the news comes out, and at the end, the breeze is just. <laughs> and like, then yeah. that ruined my day in England. <laughs> we were literally about to go to the National Portrait Museum. <laughs> yes, right. I was like, I was like, 
my girlfriend was like, okay, like enough work, right? It's just mm-hmm. going to be an us day. And I just, we were at a dim sum restaurant in like yeah. <laughs> Chinatown in England. And I was just like, I got to go. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I was like, Danny Rick is back. Yeah. Got to, got to go. I, I, I have to go. We have to go. And, uh, and then I did straight to Cam in a, in a Danny, in a, in a Chinese restaurant. Right. Yes, you did. Yeah. Wow. I think that did pretty well too. Yeah. Yeah. With, you know, no, that, I mean, it was huge news. That was yeah. fucking epic. And then at the end, like DeVries, who that like, was, started... that was pre, pre Lewis to Ferrari. That was like that. Oh, was... huge. That was huge. Yeah. It might happen this year with Checo. We'll see. Yeah. You know, um, those switches mid year are fucking fascinating. And, uh, yeah, no, it was a great. Great fucking episode. Yeah. What would you title episode two? Nightmare Blunt Rotation Part <laughs> One. <laughs> Nightmare, Blunt, ro- ro- Nightmare Blunt Rotation Part, part One. one. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. Episode three. Now, this is the McLaren. Under pressure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or you could call it, would you just give it a minute? <laughs> yeah. Just, just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's the mclaren app it's zach brown that guy with the insane accent the guy who's above zach brown yes yes just like, the sith lord above zach kind brown, of the like, chairman of the board vibe he's just like you've got to do better yeah it's a lot of i'm gonna i'm applying subtext lots of pressure yeah um uh, yeah, we see the like the 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 car launch. We see Oscar can't get into our first meeting. Yes, this is of perfect. Oscar. Yes, this, this is how we meet Oscar for the first time. Is he can't get into the <laughs> MTC and he's like waving open sesame. Yeah, and he's just like and he's just kind of like Meh. yeah, <laughs> 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 and they're like, can you use the side door? And he's like, Meh. yeah, 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 and he's late. <laughs> And Lando's like, I'm here. Yeah, I'm on time. Because I'm an adult. Because <laughs> I'm being brother now, Oscar. <laughs> he's like, he's like sipping a coffee. I was like, what? Who gave this child a coffee? It's like you're bold. You're still a child. <laughs> yeah, Oscar are... looks older than him. Right. The hairline slightly yeah, yeah, yeah. going. I'm like, you know, like yeah, you look is... older. Yeah. You yeah. look older than Lando. You, you can grow that beard out all you want, Lando. You still look like a. Like an infant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, <laughs> Oscar did tweet with the with the clip of him not being able to get in the door. Yeah. He tweeted, I know how the jetpack guy feels now. Because <laughs> of the famous clip yeah, of the yeah, guy yeah, falling yeah, on his yeah, ass yeah, and Oscar yeah. being like. <laughs> now, you know, Oscar just, Oscar just so effortlessly kind of crushing. Yeah. And Lando is kind of like peacocking. He's yeah. full peacock. He really is. I mean, he went to the Danny Rick school. He and Danny are close. Yeah. Like, he visited him this offseason. Like, he went to Perth, oh. hung out with Danny in Perth. Yeah. Like, in, like, kind of an impromptu trip. Was like, Danny, I'm coming to, can I come to Perth this weekend? He was like, yeah, come through. Perth's kind of out of the way. But it's out, <laughs> it, totally. It's completely out of the way. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, he's trying to big brother Oscar. Fully trying to big brother Oscar. I, I thought it was also interesting. This was an interesting key into this world. Is that, like, they have call times. For like these events, it's like you have a call time, and then they have their their race suits in like garment. They're like actors. It, they're like actors. Yes, that's what it's like to like arrive at a film set. You get there like two hours before the things. Or and you, Lewis was more. pissed that he that he had an earlier call time than George. Yes. Yeah. And you owe us money now because that's later. Yeah, <laughs> but um. Yeah, like the fact that like their racing suits are in those garment bags yeah. that like if I'm uh, doing a movie or something or doing a TV show like the, the when costumes brings my costume to my little fucking trailer, it's always in those little garment but bags it's and it says your like character name. Exactly. You char- it like, says Piastri, yeah. it says like, yeah. you know, Norris on it. It was just that Could was such an interesting number 1 driver, number 2 driver. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um Zach and then Zach and then the and then Lando's like Oscar's quite tall. He doesn't look tall, but he is tall. Yeah. This whole thing, and I looked it up, I'm like, Oscar's 5'10". Yeah. <laughs> like, Oscar's not some z- fucking tree. Right. But he but he does give, he because he's so thick. Yeah. So he's, thick he's around. He's got that juicy ass. Little in the middle, but got too much back. Yeah, he got that, he got that juicy ace. <laughs> um, And then during the launch, Zach goes, Carl looks bitching. <laughs> that was brutal. That was brutal. I love Zach. That was brutal. Zach... Zach gives sometimes Zach gives um you know Pierre gives middle school Zach gives like elementary school sometimes 
When he's like, yeah, high five, everybody. <laughs> sure. He has that elementary school glee to Yeah, him. yeah, sure. That, like, nine-year-old boy glee. Right. You know, yeah. that's what he gives. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, when he want how he wants to hi high five, five you is he, kind of he's like, like that guy. I think he was a was he a demo was he like a demo the Bia guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, gives yeah. that energy. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go to Iowa. <laughs> we're gonna go to South Dakota. And then we're gonna go all the way to Pennsylvania. Bia! Um And it was a lot of when they were talking you know what this was you know what Drive to Survive did really well this yeah. season is they, they did a couple of these where they're like with the, with the PR people and they're like, so this is what the fuck you're gonna say, right? They did that with Lewis and George, and they yes. did this with, like, so we're gonna like avoid all contract talk. Like, yep. You're, no talking about exit clauses. Yep. 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 We're yep. just focused on the car. And then Z Lando's body language was just like, he was so pouty and uh -huh. just like, mm, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but I do have exit clauses. <laughs> Why wouldn't I talk about my exit clauses when I have them? Yeah. No, that's that's another fascinating part of this thing is that you see those conversations that like, you know, the 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 press that these are this is why you get these like stoic kind of like nothing answers from people and that when you do get a kind of more out there answer it's like they're going someone's pissed because they were not supposed to do that and i will give this to lando i'll give, yeah. give the, the two realest people on this show mm -hmm. there's two people that are so fucking real on this show <laughs> it's unbelievable lando's in second i'll give lando second yeah, prize yeah yeah the realest motherfucker on the show is liam lawson we'll get to him later he was so fucking real that was he, amazing i i I mean, that, I'm in love with him. I, I'm in love. I with love him. Liam he's Lawson. He's so. I mean, because he, he's you the know, anti, and he's the anti DeVries. He's the anti DeVries. He's the anti DeVries. Well, the thing is, here's the other thing. He's like, I don't have enough time to fucking pretend here. Yeah, right. He's like, I might now. I'm gonna just leave it all out here. <laughs> it should be me, bitch. <laughs> this is bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. Um, and but he, I loved. I, I Lando lo just can't pretend. Yeah. He's so. On the, they're in the golf course and he's just so fucking emo. Yeah. <laughs> he's on the emo. They're like, they're this beautiful, gorgeous day and and he's like, hey, we're going to have a great year. And Lando's like, we're so slow on the string. Yeah, he's like, this golf cart's faster than our car. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> and then Zach just is like, you know how long we've been doing this, man? Like, yeah. Trying 10, to 12 years? Mm-hmm. It'd be so much sweeter when we finally get there. I'm like, wow. It was like, it was such a good moment. Well, really appealing to, and I didn't really appealing I, to how much time. Like he's like he's pulling on the heart. Toto did it. Uh, Toto did it pretty good. They, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, these guys are good at what they do. Yeah, they pull on the heartstrings. They pull on the heartstrings. He's like, what? I mean, I'm I'm leaking here for later. But when when Toto was like, you're not just a driver, you're a leader. Like like, wrote, yeah, like right, He's like, right, dude, right, right. you're also responsible for this. Yeah, is your yeah. project too? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, can't yeah. just cut and run. Right. You're right. a lead. We're. You you're a leader too. Yeah. You're I'm not the leader. We're leading this thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like Dan just had a kid, man, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you're really going to leave us now. Yeah. But no, I think I didn't realize how much time Zach and Lando had together. Yeah. I didn't realize how involved Zach was in Lando's career. First race he first race car I drove was mine. Yeah. Like he's just like you know, yeah, he a met him when he was father to him. Yeah, he's like I met him when he was fourteen. Yeah, and he's been like a benefactor for him like yeah. all that time. I didn't really realize that, and it's interesting because when you talk, because there is this discussion about like, it's like, yeah, you could just go to Mercedes and it'll be easy, or you can like build something here and think, yeah, with, with daddy. And I think that there's something interesting about that because there is this question around like why does why has Lando stayed? Why hasn't Lando it's jumped? Gotta ship? be Zach. And I think it is the relationship that he has with Zach, and I think that like you know. As much as there's there's the talk around him like not wanting to compete with Max and that he's like a little bit intimidated by that, which is like honestly, but fair. also where would he go? Where would he? Well, oh, now that this Mercedes, but he didn't know that when he signed. Right. right. Also, this is really interesting, and they, and Spanners Spanner said this. Yeah. Um, it was like this might have been a trick this last year. Because okay. they're gonna suck. Maybe, they're maybe not gonna be so good this year, and uh, because like he might have mortgaged too much to be good at the second half of this mm. year, so he could lock down Lando. Like Lando might fucking. Re we'll see. Yeah, Lando I'm might fuck because yeah. he could he could have done what Merck did. Mm -hmm. Zach could have just suffered. This, yeah, this yeah, yeah, and yeah, be yeah. like, you know what? Fuck it. Right. I'm gonna put all my eggs in the 2024 basket. But it was too important to him. For the right. sponsors that were breathing down his neck. Yep. For for and that was that was what Spanners was saying was like, you know, you see all the pressure he's under. Right. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, Merck is kind of giving up on this year. Uh -huh. Red Bull's kind of, you know, all these, all, like all these. Zach other, was sweating. Zach, and he was like, wait a minute, 
I need I need to win the now. second half of this yeah. year now. Yeah. And how much of a penalty is he going to pay in the beginning of this year? I guess I'm year? like, is that how we'll that works? Is that how that works though? Like that? It, 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 is it that like you know like you only opposing have opposing forces? Well, what do you mean? It's it's how many guys are you putting on this car versus next year's car? I see. You can allocate right more for next year's car or more for this year's car. So we'll see. We'll see because I guess I thought my thought. I guess my thought is that like if you can see the if you can like get if you can make that adjustment and then you can actually get like time on track but, understanding but Komatsu, the car. Komatsu Komatsu said this exact thing too. It was like yeah. we spent too much time on last year's car. We should have spent more time on this year's car. I it's see. like there is a z in a budget cap era. There right. is a zero sum game. I see. And like that's why Red Bull Red Bull like. They were up by so much, so like, great. We don't even have to think about this car because right. there is a finite number of resources yeah, 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 that you could yeah. spend. And maybe McLaren's did such a big jump mm. at the expense of the resources they could have spent on next year's. Car. Yeah, that's an interesting point. That's something to watch for this year to see if that is has is the case. Um, um, and yeah, that's why. And that's why Lando was like, "Was I just sold a fucking bill of goods?" Right. Was this like a false dawn? Right. 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 We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, no, because yeah. the, the the vibe of this episode is like, will Lando leave? Lando's like, you know, they're kind of like, and he's like, like, he's looking around like, am I leaving? And everyone, I'm just like, why is everyone, I'm like, everyone stop kicking my my close personal friend, Zach Brown. <laughs> Everyone's being so mean to Zach in this episode. Well, because you know what's coming. You're like, give it a fucking minute. Yeah, just give me a second, guys. That meeting that he had with like the three like big, like the OK, the OKX sponsor and the other big sponsors yeah. when they're just like at that table and they're just like, so like, what's going on? Yeah. Like this fucking, the car sucks. What the fuck is up? Yeah. And Zach, like who is usually Mr. Like cool under pressure. Yeah. You're like, he really is. He's like, I hear you. He's I like, oh, he's stuttering. He is sweating. Yeah. And and then Andrea Stella's like, you know, it's going to be tough. And Zach's just like, get it, the f please. <laughs> God. <laughs> and what, yeah. I, what was made him, a, what makes him, what, why you see that he's good at his job is he's not like transferring any of that tension to right. them. Yes. And Andrea Stella's like, man, it's going to be tough getting these upgrades. And, and Zach's like, okay. Yeah. You have no idea the fucking hell that I'm in. Right. Above me. Yeah. He's just getting shit. And he's only projecting like positivity mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm. people below him. No, he's like, Lando's like, right. we're great. We're doing great. Everything's going to be fine. As like, there's just like a yes. mountain on top of him. <laughs> it's That's so like true. a sign of a good leader. Right. Because it is that, it's that thing when it's like, when your boss is stressed about like, when your boss is stressed, it's because you know that like they're like they're stressed about someone above them. There's yeah. it's always it, it trickles down, and then sometimes there's someone who like it's trickling down, but they're like no nothing's getting underneath me. Like this is a salt. This isn't a mesh thing where the water is gonna seep through. Yeah. This is a solid fucking plank of yeah. When I did metal. The, when I did my movie with Rob, yeah. I didn't know, Rob Reiner. Yeah, not to date, but that's the only movie I've done, and that's who directed. But he yeah. was saying like. like we were working on the movie. I flew out. Yeah. We had gotten financing for the movie. I'd flown out. We'd been working on the movie. At yeah. one point, he got upset with me. Yeah. Because I was like nitpicking about some yeah. little point. He was like, just listen. Just just listen to me. And I was like, he's a little touchy, but like he had mostly been great. Yeah. And then at some point, like, at, like we were halfway th through the movie and then he was like, oh yeah. I was like, where were the other guys that we met that were financing the movie? He's like, oh, financing fell through. Yeah. And then this guy picked it up. And I was like, so when I flew out and like we were working on the movie, like there was no money. He was yeah. like, oh, there was none. Yeah. Like the movie was dead. Yeah. yeah. And I was just pretending yeah. like it was fine right. while I was trying to put other stuff together. Yeah. And he was just, and that's why I could, like, like he lost it. Like he kind of got impatient because he was like, there, well, there is yeah. no movie yeah. right now. <laughs> but he wasn't like, he wasn't like letting us know that. Right, he wasn't right, letting us right. know how bad it got. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. He was just kind of proceeding like everything was fine. Yes. Totally. And that's a sign of like a pretty good leader. Totally. Where you're just, you, it's like kind of need to know. Yeah, it was. It, it, this was an endearing episode for Zach because yeah. you did see him stressed as fuck, and then like not trying to like key his drivers into it too much, and like not trying to like you know ruin ruin that. Um, <laughs> he and then and then finally, wait, wait, Silverstone. But should we talk about George and Lando on the PJ? That was in this episode. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, uh, George Russell and Lando are on the private jet. Yeah, I think maybe they're flying to Silverstone. Yeah, and they're just like, 
And Lando's so moody. Lando's just like in a bad fucking mood. He's got that cute little pillow next to him. He's yeah, like, he's like, mm-hmm. like <laughs> my life sucks. Life. I'm in the most comfortable looking. My life sucks in this private jet. And then, but and, 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 and George's like, yeah, your car looks like shit. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm in a Mercedes. I'm in a Mercedes. I don't know if you. And my boss is Total Wolf. But um, they had that conversation around drinking. Oh, I totally forgot about this. Yeah, and George is like, George is like, it was in my contract that I couldn't drink. Right. On the At weekend. Williams. And he was like, but I know other people do. Yeah. I'd... And then it was like, not me. Yeah. <laughs> I would. And then the way he said it was like very incriminating. Right. Leno goes, I would never. Yeah. <laughs> not me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, you're just like kind of telling on yourself a little bit, I feel. Yeah. And then George was like, I could name names. I could fuck shit up. I'm like, yeah, you're in the paddock. Of, you're one of the 20 drivers. Of course you know things. Also, like, what is this narc? I mean, George being, I mean, George being a narc is f- fitting. <laughs> 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 you know, like when the principal, when you're like, how did this, you know when, um, like. He is still dream blunt rotation for me. Uh, of course. I still, he would have like a fun panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Room spinning, room spinning. Is anybody is this spinning for anybody? Is anybody else <laughs> watching George me? have a, a a stoned panic attack? Would <laughs> be incredible. Yeah. Um. No, but I mean, George is kind of like the boy, like you know, in in Harry Potter when He's they're a prefect when they're doing like Dumbledore's army or whatever. He'd the fuck. be a corrupt prefect. Yes, he was. The one. He gives head boy vibes, but yeah. like the one that will take bribes and kind of abuse his power. Yeah, like, yeah. He's yeah, not yeah. squeaky clean. Right. That's what I like. I mean, we've about seen him party with Alonzo, like you know. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. He's like got an, he's got an evil streak to him. That was just such an interesting thing to be like. I'm on Netflix. I'm like, with the cameras are here, and I'm like, I could name names because well, he wants to. Because he because he wants to he wants to serve. He wants he wants yeah. to give them what they want. It is also just like, is that like really d- damning information that someone drinks on a race weekend? We know. also know who it is. It's Max Verstappen. Yeah. <laughs> And guess what? Doesn't matter. Yeah, he won in Qatar hungover. Yeah, yeah, so, so, like, yeah. what are we really talking about yeah. here? Anyway, so yeah, Lando, the, the episodes, gets, you know. This is Silverstone. Zach can barely get out of the McLaren. Yes. Do so we see Zach? Like, the Netflix cameras were like, get that. <laughs> get that. And Zach, Zach owned it. He's like, yeah, it's not the easiest to get out of. <laughs> get out He's of such a fucking legend. <laughs> um, and then, you know, Lando gets P2. second gets second in Silverstone. Yeah, and then it's like, I want. It's like, does Zach at this point like just grab people by the head and like shove the head <laughs> in their crotch? <laughs> like, what are you like, no. Yeah, no, Zach, no, what Zach does is that, that scene in Click where he pauses the thing and he like farts in, in, um, <laughs> in like David Hasselhoff's face and like smacks him in the face a bunch of times and like plays and he's like, oh, my head is killing me. And also, what's that smell? <laughs> That's what Zach Brown did to all the fucking haters. But then I, I, the, the, the quote that he said when that happened, because he's running to the podium. Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to run him. I've- he goes, he literally says, gotta go see my boy Lando <laughs> as he's running to the podium. Uh, he says, gotta see my boy Lando. Yes, yes. Uh, <sighs> yeah, it was beautiful. I loved when he goes, when the, when, when he goes, uh, Hamilton will be close to the restart and Lando's like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then and then when Lando, when Hamilton's another terrifying person, he's like, that's yes. the other shark in right, the Jaws right, right. movie. That's who you don't want behind uh, you, yeah. And, and there was a great moment where, because they keep, that's another thing that they, Keep rem- they keep doing. They're always like checking the gap. Uh huh. The gap two point one. Gap one point nine. Yes. Gap one point. You're like, oh fuck it. Yeah. And then at one point, Lena goes, gap. <laughs> <laughs> His voice cracked. <laughs> it was like, gap. <laughs> He's so panicked yeah. because that shark is. Well, it's, and it's happened every other time. Yeah. It's always happened gap! that way. And then, um, yeah, and then he gets there, and uh, yeah, it was fucking. No, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was beautiful. Yeah. If you had to give a title for this episode. Zaddy. Zaddy. <laughs> Zaddy. Yeah. I, I'd say it's stop kicking my boy, Zach Brown. <laughs> stop kicking him. Give him, let him cook. Yeah. Let him cook. Yeah. And he, Lando's just, Lando's so emo. He's so moody. Yeah. I love it. No, I mean it's it makes for um it makes for great TV. It's the opposite of DeVries. You know, it's like it's like it's like what we said about DeVries, which is that he's just like every, he's I was so stiff. He's everything's like DeVries is like everything fi- everything's fine, lots of tests, lots of papers. Like yeah. you know, like everything's fine, I'm everything's good, I'm a killer, blah blah blah. Lando maybe is the more where he's just like everything sucks actually. And it's like it's actually okay. 
But at least you're getting you're we're, you're feeling the highs and lows, and you're you're observing a real person. Totally. Well, well, he was the second best person to watch in this whole series. Yeah. The for the it, well, like in terms of realness, you're like, yeah. oh, I'm just observing somebody who's existing and doesn't he doesn't care about the fucking cameras here. Yeah. Well, he's he understands also because he's like that because he's from the Gen Z. It's like authentic. It's like I'm not authenticity is kind of king. Mm. You got to feel like it's it's. The pomp and circumstance and the fucking like facade that you create is actually kind of both people see. He through wasn't that raised shit. by boomers who are like, you got always got to be poised, stiff upper lip, and, and upper shake lip. them and shake their hands you and look them in the, the eye. eye. Exactly. It's like that was our parents. Yeah, he didn't subscribe to that shit. Yeah. Whereas you know, Daniel Ricardo was raised by boomers who probably right. told him right. to always be poised and composed. And exactly. You sing. I was always told to sing for my supper. Right. Like when you're somewhere, you're somebody's guest. Yes. To, to be entertaining. That's interesting because that's that I think is a common um, a commonality between the younger drivers. I mean, young people maybe in general, but the younger drivers. Like, I think Oscar has a bit of that too. He shows it differently, but Oscar's not like you know, like in that interview. There was this that interview right where um, we well, could be entertaining and be. I think that's authentically who Daniel is, though. I think it is too, but I think it's p part of how you become authentically yourself is like how you're raised. Like, right. You know, what you're taught at an early age informs how you like behave in certain circumstances and circum environments like that you're able to compartmentalize. What I love, I mean, Daniel is such a psycho in terms of how polite he is when he's like, I'd be happy with radio silence. Yeah. Like every other driver's like, shut the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> shut Leave up. Leave me alone. But Daniel just goes, I would be happy with radio silence. Right, right. It was just crazy how yeah. polite he is. Yeah, he's the other extreme. Right, but it, but it, but it feels like he's just like that all the time. Right, like it's just, it's just. It's no, just we've so, seen him in these environments, and like you know, like we've well, observed him. He's just he, and he really is happy to do that shit. I don't yeah, think, he, yeah, I don't think he gets home and is just a, like an Ellen DeGeneres vibe. Right. Whereas he's a nightmare. And I of really, course, like sometimes it's more difficult than others, and he, yeah. there, there can be things going on in his personal life. But like, I, yeah, he doesn't like. He doesn't transfer the tension. He doesn't let it bleed through. Yeah. Which would actually make him kind of like maybe like a good lead. And in that same like Zach Brown kind of way almost. There's there's something interesting between yeah. them. Like that Zach does, you know, he can be stressed over here, but he's not going to show it over here. Whereas like if, if Lando was stressed about something, like he, you would know exactly although, what Although we've you and I have fought about this where it's like, yeah. okay, can you, can you be a little less authentic? Right, yeah, yeah. Do you have to be a fucking right. thundercloud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. the time. <laughs> Isn't that killing? Yeah. I mean, it makes for great television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. in terms of like, if he wants to be a team leader. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Are people going to rally around a guy and be like, this car fucking yeah. sucks. <laughs> right, right. Do you know what I mean? No, it's true. So that's the thing about these Gen Z kings. Like, do you yeah. want to, are you going to want to, are you going to want to go to war with a guy who's like, mm -hmm. Right, who's kind of like swayed with the breeze. That's yeah. someone who's like, who's not moody. just like. Who's moody. Yeah, by the way, yeah, yeah. By the way, that's a, that's could be a, that could have been Alonzo's problem mm -hmm. too. It's not just a generational totally, thing. It's totally. a moodiness thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a moodiness thing. Um, so not to like just single out one generation. I think Alonzo suffered from that problem. No, Where, like, totally. When things are good, he, he's, you, you can't have a better leader. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a million dollar smile on his he's face. Got, but when, but things, when are things are bad, he's just so fucking upset and yeah, angry yeah, and he, yeah, he's yeah, so yeah. authentically himself. He's so angry. He's right, so upset. That it doesn't inspire, it doesn't, it doesn't inspire. inspire confidence. Yeah. And, it, and, and you it don't want to go to war with this guy. And it does affect the environment. It around, affects everyone around you yet. when you're just like in your feelings and yeah. in your stuff. Yeah. That like everyone then now has to be like, oh, like this person's, you know, oh, like Lando's upset or Alonso's upset. So like now we all have to like cater to that. And it just, and it just infects everybody. Yeah. As a, right. As opposed to someone who's like, you know, they're upset, but then they're like, but, right. Daniel, but Daniel is just like, let's go. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, maybe. And Zach Brown is like, let's go. Right. And, and I think, and, uh, and even Oscar, it's like, you don't ever get the highs, but you never get the lows either. Yeah, so it's sure. just, he's just going to keep, Yeah. It, it, you know, it's consistent. I think like, who are a good example? I mean, I mean, Yuki Yuki's kind of in that vibe of like the bit of the highs and the lows. Right. That's like you know Yuki can be that way. I think Lance can be that way. You know, there's a there's a bit, but I, I, it's interesting because there's, like, there's a that that fine balance, right? Because it's like the stiff upper lip can also be like off putting in a way, or or, or the only positive and not being able to look at the negative can sometimes like also not inspire confidence because if you're like. Yeah, the car is like the car is shit. You need to be able to say that. Like whereas DeVries is kind of like everything is awesome, everything's good. Like that's also kind of like 
You're watching someone not in touch with reality as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Lu I mean, I think Lewis does. I think I think Lewis, Lewis can be a little moody. Lewis can definitely be moody, but I think he like he 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 he'll let you know that he's frustrated, but he will like kind of he'll let you know and then like put it over here and get to work. I mean, he he looked very moody in that oh. photo shoot, but that's. But that's different. That's, that's like, different. I don't want to be here. This is fucking that's like, media thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? For a thing that we never even fucking saw. Yeah. You know what I mean? We only saw it through Drive to Survive. Um, but I thought, just getting back to this episode, what was I thought was an interesting thing. And I think I think it was Danica Patrick who said this, was just like, you know, this, the, this is people train their entire lives. Like, you see Lando when he's a fucking kid. Mm -hmm. And you see him rising through the ranks and like people they commit their entire lives to this thing And then when you feel like you have that opportunity and the, the, the team's not there as much as loyalty it's crushing as much as loyalty's there and he appreciates Zach and everything he's done for him at the end of the day like He's lived his entire life pursuing this goal and like his relationship with, with Zach is one thing But he, th and he's that's, held up his end right and he's held up in his, his end and it was really and I don't interesting think Lando was a highly touted person as much like I think he was seen as like a pay driver until like very late. Yeah. Because he was so wealthy. Right. Right. And I don't think people took him as seriously right. as someone like Zach did. Right. 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 And um, and yeah, I think I think he surprised a lot of people. Yeah. I don't think Lando Norris like entering was as highly touted as like a Leclerc. No. Or a Max or a um. I think he's one of the surprises. Yeah, he. I think he is. I think like come the Formula Two, er, like once he was in F two, I think that he was. It was like him and George were kind of like the people that they were looking out for. But George was a bit more of that. I like, think George is more highly talented. He was. He was. But it was the two of them. Yeah. Because like Albon talks about that. He was like everyone was going to that season, being like, "You guys are the stars," and like I came in and was like also there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but no, I think you're right. I think that that Lando's uh, stock rising as high as it has is kind of a bit surprising to people yeah yeah so that's this episode if you want to hear this amazing analysis for four episodes four oh, through ten four through ten four through ten then yeah. go over to patreon.com slash trf pod and be a part of the fucking resistance yeah okay you motherfucking vankas thanks so much see you on the patreon Love you. Goodbye. Bye, Bye. Bye.